Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to my channel Discover Your Knowledge. Today we will discuss what the demand is. So basically the demand, the classical uh, definition of demand is the, it, that it is a functional relationship between uh, the price of the product and the quantity demanded of that particular product in a particular period of time provided that all the other factors are held constant. Now the functional relationship the word that I used uh, for the definition, it means that demand does not focus on just the current price of the product and the quantity demanded of that product by the consumers, but it also focuses on all the different prices and the price differences that are going to occur and the quantity dif uh, demanded differences that would occur in case of the price changes. So it is not going to be for only single price and the quantity demanded. All right. When I say it, that all the other factors held constant, it means that price is not the only factor that is going to affect the quantity demanded of any product. There are a lot of factors and that vary according to the nature of the product, according to the circumstances, according to the environment and the, all the external factors and the internal factors that would affect the demand or the quantity demanded of the product. All right, I said that, there is, that uh, all the other factors are held constant. It means that price is not the only determining factor of the quantity demanded, but there are other factors also. But just for the sake of argument, we would say that if we want to make, make any kind of relationship between the price and the quantity demanded of any product, we would have to uh, held constant all the other factors. Now, what are those other factors or what could the other factors be? Let's suppose if we take one factor, uh, tastes or the preferences. Uh, as you can see that if, uh, if certain government who uh, puts uh, some kind of ban on the smoking. So the demand or the quantity demanded of that uh, cigarettes or the alcohol would drop, eventually drop. Whether there is a uh, price change in that, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the market or not of that particular product. One other example could be if uh, God forbiddenly, if some kind of a uh, Calamity uh, occurs, a natural disaster occurs. So the demand of the luxury good items, goods or items in, in that particular area or the demand of the construction materials in that particular area would eventually drop and it would be independent of the price of that product, whether it is on the same price or it is being decreased. So these are the other internal factors. There are a lot of factors uh, one other factor is the income. As the demand incorporates both the willingness and the ability of a person or a consumer to buy a certain good or a product. So the consumer's income is also a very important factor in determining the demand of a product. So if the demand of a product varies directly in case of an income increase of a consumer, the demand or the good is said to be a normal good. And if the demand of a product varies inversely in case of, an, of a consumer's uh, income increase, the demand is or the, uh, sorry, the uh, good is said to be a, an inferior good. So what we have understood is the normal good is the good which would be demanded more in, key, in case of the income increase of a person. And the inferior good is the good, which would be demanded less in case of the price increase. We would take one example over here. Let's suppose if a consumer was uh, using a motorbike when the income was low, the income bike for that particular person or the consumer is the inferior good and when the 
income of that particular consumer increases he now prefers to drive a car instead of a motorbike so the car is the normal good for that particular customer but let me tell you one thing that it has nothing to do with the quality of that particular item or the product all that matters is the is the preference what the consumer is going to prefer in case of the normal income and the rise in income the other factor is the price of the related goods now what is the price of the related goods basically when we say that one good is a substitute of the other as the name suggests itself that substitute which means that we can satisfy our need or our demand with one product or the other product and we will get the same level of satisfaction so if there is a price change in a product so the consumers will switch to the b product and will get the same level of satisfaction and if there is the price change or the price in decrease in in the first a uh, scenario i meant that it was a price increase and in the second scenario i'm saying that if there is a price decrease in the uh, product a so the consumers would switch from product b to product a and they would consume less of the product b now because they are getting the same level of satisfaction from both of the products so why to pay more to get the same level of satisfaction so these kind of goods can be called as substitute goods now what what kind of goods can we say that these are the substitute goods let's suppose we talk about the cold beverages if there is one carbonated drink available in the market and the price rises of that particular uh, drink so the consumers would eventually uh, shift their demand and would less consume the first uh, carbonated beverage of whose price is increased now in the market and they would switch to the other uh, carbonated beverage and would get the same level of satisfaction all right in this category of the price of the related goods the other kind of a category is uh, the other kind of a good is the uh, con, uh, is the complementary good which is always used together like product a and product b are always used together let's let's suppose we take an example of a toothpaste and a toothbrush these both of the these products are complement each other because they are to uh, used simultaneously so what i want to say is if there will be a price increase in the product a the consumers will less consume the product a as well as there will be in decrease in the demand of the product b if they both are the complement goods and if there is a price decrease in the uh, product a the consumers will consume now more of the product a and and the market would eventually see the increase in the demand of the product b because both of the uh, products complement each other and they are used together for example if there is a price decrease in the uh, computers so there will be more of the demand of the printers and the cartridges because these products both of the equipments complement each other and they are used together the other factor is the future expectations of the lower prices or the higher prices all right if the consumers assume that or expect or anticipate 
that the, that the prices are going to fall further in the future or in the coming months they would stop buying that particular product right now and they would wait for the prices to drop further by some kind of a percentage or if they anticipate that the, that the prices of, of that particular product are going to rise in the coming uh, months or in the, uh, or in the near future they would buy more of the products and or they would stockpile that kind of that particular product in order to stay safe from that boom in the prices there is if you take the example of a steel so if there is any kind of an unlawful situation in the uh, in country so the price of the steel would fall because there would be less of the demand of the construction materials and there would be expectations that the prices would go further down the last variable that we discussed today is the uh, number of consumers addition in the number of or increase in the number of consumers if there is uh, an increase in the size of the population and especially in the middle segment I'm just giving you the example it could be any segment but let's suppose if there is a rise in the middle middle segment uh, population so uh, there would be more uh, of the uh, uh, grains and the pulses demanded than earlier now we can summarize and finalize our equation by writing that quantity demanded of a product X is the function of all the variables that influence the demand of that particular product that are given in the parentheses. And the ellipsis mentions that there could be other factors also which can be controllable or uncontrollable. Now here we have summarized all the variables that influence the demand for a particular product in a generalized demand function which says that uh, QD represents that quantity demanded of good X where P represents the price of the good or like the T represents the uh, individual traits or the preferences I represents the income PA and PB represent the prices of the goods which are related to the consumption of uh, good X whereas EX represents the consumers expectations of the future prices and NC represents the number of consumers all right that's all for today if you like my video please do let me know in the comments below do subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon also so that you get all the notifications from my channel thank you so much